So many times I've been asked uh, using Flow Rhythm how to pass and um, more importantly return an array uh, from within a function and I've got plenty of videos that show how to pass an array and I've always said um, that Flow Rhythm can't return an array, certainly not in its setting, there seems to be no way of, of returning it. Um, but I've been asked loads and loads of times about this so I, uh, I, I posted on the Flow Rhythm forum page and response back from Bert who's one of the developers I believe of Flow Rhythm and he pointed me to one of his examples. Now I don't like example, I have to be honest, it, it feels wrong um, but there's no denying it does work. Uh, it's clear that Flow Rhythm to me seems to treat arrays globally so that when you create an array and then you pass it into a function the the local variable as I would see it in that uh, in that function is actually pointing back to the original um, array so any modifications you make in that local variable don't need to be returned back because they're impacting um, on the global variable to me it just feels wrong or natural but there's no denying it, it, it works and at the end of the day what we're trying to do here is, is show some simple techniques to, to students for computational thinking. So I've gone back to my original bubble sort program because it's the one that I was asked about most recently about how to pass an array and pass it back. I will put the code up and a, and a link to the code in the video. Um, as you go through it, what I've got here just to prove it's working, let's get the code window open. There we go. Let's press that a bit as well. So what we've got here is a, a five to five element array declared, a variable declared. I'm I'm not messing about here. I just stuffed some um, integers into that. I'm not. You, you can find a way. I've got loads of examples of how to populate an array and how to change the size of an array and so on. So I'm just doing it for the purpose. And I've got a little loop outputs it to prove it's unsorted and we'll step through it and you can see it's unsorted. It then um, calls the bubble sort which I've moved into a function and it's sending this unsorted list. So if we look at the bubble sort function, same as before, it's a bubble sort function. We've seen it a million times. Um, but you'll see I call it in here as unsorted list, U list, different name. It's a local variable. Um, it, comes in, it does all the sorting, does all the changing, but because it's actually not really treating it as a local variable but a list of initial variable, it's updating the main um, array. It's not just doing a little copy. Um, this turn just goes back once that's done because of that. Little print to prove um, it's the same array look, so unsorted, unsorted, um, but this is obviously sorted. So if I start it from the part, we can see the array populated and we can see it outputs it. Output on the screen so you can see. Okay, so we can see it's outputted. Okay, so now it's inside the um, the sorting array, the sorting function. You can see I'm really pressing here just to it's going through it. I'm not going to spend all day doing each element. So I'll press run and we can see it actually sorted the unsorted list. So it does work. Um, what Roberto says is perfectly true. Um, when a array is passed in, it seems to me that it's passing it in as a uh, as a pointer um, to the original array rather than a local copy. Um, I've copied and pasted the code that it generates. Um, into Python and <laughs> it still works in Python so Python clearly does it in a different way to I'd imagined as well um, but there we go it's an, an array being passed into a function the the uh, the array is sorting the the function is sorting the array and it's writing it back out again and it's affecting the side list so for everyone who is asking thank you to uh, Roberto and the guys on the Flowgrim forum to, to help me out with that one and there's our solution